Night Football Part 2. BC plays in Vancouver. When the Lions were last there, they dominated Saskatchewan. Then last week, they were dominated by Saskatchewan. So, BC 5-3, and three, trying to stay at the top of the pack in the West Division. From Katy, Texas. There he is, folks. The guy just doesn't lose after bye week. Eastern Washington product, Bo Levi Mitchell. 13 touchdowns on the season. Charleston Hughes is only six sacks away from 100. If you ask him, he'll say, I'll get those tonight. At the right age of 33, he is showing no signs of slowing down. You better know where this guy is on every single defensive play. Hey, been in this guy's shoes before. You got to bounce back. See what you're made of. Adversity doesn't reveal character. It simply gives you an opportunity to step up to the plate and show you. The Manny Show hasn't registered one 100 receiving yard this game, this year, but I still think he's capable of big plays. Physically, he's not 100%, but there is one muscle that is 100%, his mouth. Ooh. And that leads us to one big reason why I'm really looking forward to this game as we welcome you to part two of Friday Night Football here on TSN, the Lions and the Stampeders. Rod Smith, Milt Stiegel, and Matt Dunnigan. You mentioned the Maddie Show. Well, it was back in March. We recorded a show you perhaps you've seen called Around the Table. We do it with the GMs, coaches, players too. And the players this year were Mike Riley, Bo Levi Mitchell, and Manny Arsenal talking about the rivalry between the Lions and the Stampeders. Uh, he had this to say, guaranteeing a BC victory. Have a listen. I'm not losing to Calgary in 2017, man. Can you can you put that guarantee on camera? Listen, <laughs> we're, we're rolling. Is this camera rolling yeah, right yeah. now? Hey, hey, BC Line fans, listen. We're not losing to Calgary this year. And how many times we got y'all? Twice? Y'all got to play listen. this right before our first game. All right, hey. We may, we may do I'm, this. BC's playing Calgary. Yeah, we might listen, just roll I, this I, in. Is that okay? Look, look, hey, 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 I'm coming straight they to They come you. to me, listen. <laughs> okay. We let them, look, we spared them too many years, man. Hey, we can't be sparing them boys no more. Okay. What do you think of that? <laughs> what do I think of that? A little liquid courage, huh? Rod, <laughs> were you I drinking milk. alcohol, Rod? I, I was Couldn't drinking water, milk. I'm a good good you talking yeah. about. Liquid courage. His <laughs> eyes were nice and glossy, That'd weren't they? Oh. <laughs> what was in those mugs, Rod? Uh, no, just water. Just water, guys. Water I mean, we're good. Water we're good. What, well, I, I'm not, I'd I'm not like allowed to know. say. You know I'm not allowed to say. The banter between, you know, competitors and teeing this up. And, you know, Manny's had a tough year. You know, and I think in Bo Levi Mitchell, 13 touchdowns and three interceptions, his team has only lost one time mm -hmm. and and I, I just think that um, uh, he he's not happy with where he's no, at right at now and, and his not football team so you know both these competitors are pressing and pushing forward and trying to elevate the play of people around him as they go into this ball well, game. it's time for Manny to step up you think about this game who's out Burnham and oh, more yeah I mean and I know he's not hundred percent he's hurting but they're all hurting so he needs to go out there and really show what he's made of. You know, coming into this year, he was top five in our in our top 50. He, yeah. he hasn't been playing that well, way. What about we, BC's defense? You know, yeah. not just offense, but BC's defense and how they're going to respond. You know, that that has been a mainstay for them. And they've been solid in the back end with linebacking core that continues to find people to play, even in the absence of Adam Big Hill. Fenner's had an incredible season. Yeah. That football team and that side of the ball was embarrassed last week. And to bounce back against this football team and have a good outing and shut them down, that would say a lot to it's, the rest it's, of the Western it's, it's Conference. It's going to take a lot. Calgary Stampeders coming off that bye week since 2005. They're undefeated. So they're BC is going to have to play a great game to win. And these West versus West games, I mean, just so important. I mean, BC's lost two at Edmonton. They did beat Winnipeg, came back with a big fourth quarter. But, yeah, it is, uh, it, it's absolutely huge and, and money do, at this And stage. don't look over your shoulder because yeah. Saskatchewan is yeah. right there. Yeah. And, yeah. and they're coming. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, it was a cold day that day. I might have had something in mind. Those guys Rod, absolutely I'm played. Disappointed, just Rod. water. Just water. Rod. Just watch football as fans. And the kickoff is coming up next. Jennings for the win. Into the corner. Jump ball. And it's intercepted. And the Stampeders a win. Big domestic. And there is Cote. Touchdown. Wah, 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 wah. Showdown between the top two teams for a trip to the Great Cup Final. Mitchell on the air, looking deep, looking for Daniels, in behind, touchdown! Thanks very much, Rod. Another big Western showdown tonight at BC Play Stadium. It's the 5-1 and one Stampeders and the 5-3 and three BC Lions. On the heels of a great performance last night by tailback Andrew Harris, 
Let's put the spotlights on two of the top tailbacks in the league heading into the week. Jerome Messam leads the league in rushing in seven games, just shy of 500 yards on the season so far. And right behind him heading into the week was Jeremiah Johnson for the BC Lions. Number two in yards coming in, but leads the league in rushing touchdowns and overall touchdowns with seven. Wally Buono's Lions looking for a rebound from that 41-8 thrashing Sunday in Saskatchewan. The Lions have won nine of their last ten games following a defeat. A real gut check time game for Wally Buono. And Dave Dickinson, Stampeders come off the bye and how about their record off the break 14-0 since 2005. And Oh, sparkling 8 4 0 winning percentage for Dave Dickinson. Outstanding win loss record in his young career. So, not just trying to bounce back from last week's game in Saskatchewan, but I wonder if still in the minds of the BC Lions that 42 to 15 Western final last year, the last time these two teams hooked up. First of two meetings in 2017 in the regular season. Patrick Levels has dropped deep along with Roy Finch. Ty Long has it on the tee, and here we go with the second half of our doubleheader tonight. It's Finch, finds a crease, and another big Finch return up across midfield and a terrific start for the Calgary Stampeders, a 47-yard return. Bo Levi Mitchell start number 59 for him. He's won 48 of those games and against the BC Lions a record of three and two. 13 touchdowns, three interceptions on the season for Bo Levi Mitchell. Calgary Stampeders coming off the bye. Should be well prepared for this one. And coming off 101 points in their last two games. Rob Cote lines up as a wide out there. Make it to mess him. On a roll is Mitchell. Got an open man. Mark and Michelle couldn't hang on. Oh, he drops a touchdown on the opening play. It was a touchdown. He's open on the corner. They dropped the perfect play to start this one out. Good field position, so attack. Continue with that momentum. Mark and Michelle didn't even take a peek. He just flat out dropped it. Guy who burst onto the scene a couple of games ago against Hamilton. Six catches, 190 yards, and a touchdown in that game. So a missed opportunity, second and ten. Here's Mitchell over the middle, and he's got Markway McDaniel, a first down catch for McDaniel. Well, Mark and Michelle is the guy that we highlight in the starting lineup. He's in there for Kamar Jordan. Still out of the lineup, and Devaris Daniels will move inside and take a look at that left tackle in Spencer Wilson, who not only anchors the tackle, started every game, but has a two-point convert this season on a nice catch. Guy who seems to be able to plug into any spot on that offensive line, a first down, and the first run of the game for a big Jerome Messam, and he is drilled by the middle linebacker, Solomon Elamimian, after five. Well, let's take a look at the BC Lions defense. Craig Rowe leads, the lead, or leads their team in sacks, and then you go back to the linebacking core. Solomon Elamimian leads the league in tackles. And Anthony Gator back in the lineup at halfback. Buddy Jackson dressing it on the sideline, but will not start. Gator back and healthy. No Mikhail Brooks for the Lions tonight. BC giving up over 400 yards Sunday at Mosaic, second and five. Mitchell's going to throw deep once again, and that one knocked down by Gator. There is a flag on the play. The intended target was McDaniel. Mark McDaniel's out there on the hash mark. He's going to run what's basically called a, a rub that turns into a wheel route down the numbers. I'm wondering if he's called for a pick there. 
Illegal contact on receiver, BC, number 26. A 10 yard penalty, first down, Calgary. Set 26, Tony Burnett. But it is a first down for the Stamps. The ball at the 26 of BC. Stamps hit the out, the six receiver set. And early movement looked like Spencer Wilson out of his stance at left tackle. Procedure, Calgary, number 50. Five-yard penalty, remains first down. Well, that BC Lion last game against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, they just weren't prepared when they came out of the locker room. They were playing at a different pace and a different speed. The level of intensity, Wally Buono read it before the game even began. Saw his team lose badly to the Rough Riders and wanted a better start tonight. They need a stop to try and accomplish that right on this first drive. Rory Kohler to McDaniel in motion to the right side. Mitchell's looking the other way and it's knocked down. Purifoy came across on the pass intended for Michelle. So real second and 15. Real good break downhill here by Luchez Purifoy who comes from a deep zone coverage and just playing the ball and cuts underneath it. But he makes up a lot of ground with the ball in the air. Bo Levi Mitchell had him open. And the timing on the throw was a good, was good time. Just a nice defensive play by Purifoy coming out of that zone defense. Pass him to the sidelines. Finch now waggles out of the backfield. Six receivers for Mitchell again. He'll step up, throw into the back of the end zone for Pollard incomplete. Chandler Finner there defensively. The Stampeders will send the field goal unit on. Chris, Bo Levi Mitchell has not run once this season. The BC Lions are going to rush three with no linebackers. They're putting all their coverage out over top of those Calgary four receivers to the wide field. They're trying to outnumber in coverage and force Bo Levi Mitchell to go ahead and try and run the ball. He hasn't done it all year. It, it felt like he might take off there, but you're right. I think a lot of us had to... Check the stats a couple of times. Here's Paredes putting it through from 38 yards out. And the Stampeders open the scoring after that good kick return by Roy Finch. So how about Jonathan Jennings? How does he bounce back? And how does he respond to what he called the worst game of his life last week? Three nothing Stampeders as Chris Rainey drops deep. Lions opting for the kickoff after the field goal. Moretta is high, but not deep. Rainey from just inside the 20, across the 35 yard line, dragged down around the 37, Alex Singleton there, and here comes Jonathan Jennings after going 14 for 30, 195 last week, and four interceptions. Yeah, said it was his worst game. Wally Buono said it was the worst game that he's been involved with. Now, in fairness to Jonathan Jennings, he was pressured in that game 14 times. He was sacked four times and hit a bunch more. And when that happens to any quarterback, they start to rush their throws and lose accuracy. Four interceptions was the result. Without a couple of his key weapons, hurried there on a hit up front from Vaughters, and it'll be second and ten. Well, two late scratches. Brian Burnham and Nick Moore, two top receivers, are out. So it'll be Maurice Morgan out of North Carolina State that will come in, and he'll play with Iannuzzi and Shaq Johnson to the wide field. Once change up the offensive line. Hunter Stewart is out at left tackle. Antonio Johnson plays for him. Ten two and outs last week. Trying to avoid an early one here. Second and ten. Four man rush. Jennings stands in looking for Arsenault and almost intercepted. 
Should have been picked off by Jamar Wall. And it is a two and out to start for BC. Two and out to start and two throws for Jonathan Jennings that aren't going to give him a whole lot of confidence trying to bounce back from that tough game against Saskatchewan. One that missed the target and one that was should have been intercepted. Jamar Wall, the best shot at it. Arsenal playing DB on the play to prevent the interception. So Ty Long kicking to the explosive Roy Finch. Punt return touchdowns in each of his last two. A 49-yard punt. He brings it back across the 40, but flags on the play. Roly Lambala brings him down. And we'll sort out the penalty when we come back. Old Levi Mitchell, 3-2 and two in his career against BC. 11 touchdowns, just two interceptions. Legal block against the Stamps on that return. So Dave Dickinson's Stampeder offense backed up at their 15-yard line to start this second possession. Bowley by Mitchell, one for four to start. And that drop by Michelle, short drop here. And that's incomplete, Mark, and Michelle stumbled a bit in his break. And now Mitchell, one for five. Yeah, clearly, Bo Levi Mitchell is, is targeting Mark and Michelle early on here. They're just not quite on the same page just yet. to him three or four times already tonight. So second and ten. Three-man front for BC. And the draw play to Messam. Max Ford will make the tackle. Jerome Messam brought down around the 25-yard line, close to the first down. Starting to get the ball, Calgary, a lot more to Jerome Messam in the last three weeks. It's a nice call on the draw play and a good move right at the line of scrimmage to find himself a little opening, created his own hole. And then strong strides to that first down marker. Well, they mark him at the 24 a yard short. Dave Dickinson not going to take a chance early in the game that deep in Calgary territory. No, too deep yet. Way too deep there. He got just shy of that marker, and that's uh, that's a full yard. So Rob Maber boots it away. Hangs that up. Rainey at his 42. And Rainey dropped at the 49. A flag on the play. We'll step aside. Second series for Jonathan Jennings. 3-0 Calgary. Well, he was coming back off injury last week at Mosaic, and it it didn't start well, and it just seemed to get progressively worse. Four interceptions thrown. Three of them picked off by Ed Ganey, a night that Jonathan Jennings will just try to forget. Oh, man, it was, it was bad. It was tough, uh, tough to deal with. Felt very vulnerable out there and uh, just, you know, just didn't... Didn't have it on my side that day. When you're playing that bad, it's, it feels terrible. You know, you know that everybody's watching. You know that you're kind of letting your teammates down. It was a tough game, but, um, you know, a, a great lesson for me to learn. Everyone has those kind of games. If you've played any football, you walk across that stripe, you've had a bad game. It's what you do right after. We'll see how he bounces back. It was two and out on the first series. He's been good. Coming off a loss. Maurice Morgan and Arsenault motion to the left side. The fly sweep. Chris Williams looking for the edge and unable to turn it upfield. He is dropped at the 50-yard line. Just start 29 for Jonathan Jennings, but 10 times he's come off a loss and had to bounce back and regroup from it. He's played well. Seven wins, just three losses in that second game after the loss, and pretty good numbers. Changing the play call. They're going to get it off. They do. There's Jennings under pressure. And the pass is intercepted. Picked off 
off on the tip by Singleton. Alex Singleton and Shaq Johnson catches him from behind. It's the first interception of the year for Singleton. The ninth different Stampeder with an interception this season. Well, it's created by pressure, first of all. And the pressure after Jennings gets out of the pocket, he gets on the run. Pressure right here. He's going to bounce outside. Now he's got pressure and thrown off his back foot again. The ball's slightly behind Jeremiah Johnson. He can't come up with a, a catch that he should have. Both both hands on it, and when it's tipped up like that, one of his four against Saskatchewan was exactly the same off the hands of Chris Williams. Singleton, number four in the league in defensive plays. Here's Messam. Flag comes down, and Messam gets dropped by Purifoy. <laughs> Penalty against Calgary as Singleton celebrates his pick on the sidelines. Holding Calgary, number 50. Ten-yard penalty remains first down. Call against Spencer Wilson. Stan Peters with only 100 penalty yards total in the last three games. Yeah, but first in the league in that in that department. But 40 already in this opening quarter. So first and 20. Back at the BC 37. Short drop over the middle. Open there is Tavares Daniels and dragged down by Tony Burnett. Tony Burnett is kind of stuck there. Daniels gets in behind him, and then he has a two-way go, basically. He can slide into the middle in this zone, or he can he can slide outside, depending on where T Tony Burnett lines up. 15-yard gain, and Burnett couldn't have been right on that one. If he goes straight back, then Daniels breaks out. Goes out, Daniels breaks in behind him. So second and manageable, second and five. Five receivers out, and Mitchell on a roll. He'll throw down by the goal line and short hops that. And the timing seemed to be off on that play. Intended once again for Mark and Michelle. Well, this will be an adjustment for Dave Dickinson. This is again the BC Lions going with just three man pressure up here, and they're dropping nine back into coverage. And now Bo Levi Mitchell knows that he's got lots of time, but he's going to have outnumbered coverage for his receivers. So this time he rolls to his right. The last time he kind of scrambled up in the middle. This will have to be adjustment. How do you beat this three-man drop nine pressure uh, pressure from the BC Lions? So Rene Paredes from 29 yards out hits a second field goal here in the first quarter to double the Stampeders lead. Both Lions quarterbacks saw action last week and have started games this year, but it's Jonathan Jennings who's number one at the moment with more Perry Sokowski on the sidelines. Chris, thank you very much. Yeah, if ever there was a week to create a little bit of a QB controversy, it would have been this week. Paul Ibono squashed that right away at the beginning of the week. Except this Jonathan Jennings teams. And Jennings, although he's got an MOP behind him, said the fact that he's played enough football, he's confident things will be okay. So while he's done his bit, Jonathan gets his chance, but I'll tell you what, after those first two series, two and out, and a pick, already pockets in the crowd, giving the old Lou late chance. I don't know if this will ever go away unless Jennings keeps on winning. Shaq Murray Lawrence helping Jonathan Jennings out, providing good field position for this next start. Oh, well, it's good that Wally Buono made the decision early and let the team and the quarterbacks know that it would be Jennings again. Remember, in that game against Saskatchewan, Jennings did get pulled. Lule, Lule came into the game, and then Jennings went back into the game in the second half. So Wally Buono treating Jonathan Jennings as the guy. He's the starting quarterback here in BC. Looking for his first completion, but handing it off to Jeremiah Johnson. Not much up the middle. Johnson came into the week number two in the league in rushing behind Jerome Messam. You know, in one bad game, one game where you have it just goes off the rails and snowballs on you does not mean that, you know, everything that you've built in 28 starts at that point go out the window. And if Wally Buono starts going back and forth from one quarterback to the other, there's no true leader. I think he did the right thing. Now could Jennings 
get back on track here. Second down over the middle. There's a completion. Arsenal stretching out, trying to get to the first down. Held up there by Tunde Adeliki, the rookie safety in for Josh Bell. He's so, going to be short. I yep. just don't know how short he will be. Like maybe as much as two yards. Yeah. Good solid tackle. By Adeliki the, for the safety coming down. Playing for Josh Bell, and he comes down and makes a good, solid tackle. Hold Manny Arsenal short by a couple of yards. So even on the stamp side of midfield, Wally Bono not in a gambling mood early. Unless there's something on, but there's not. And it's blocked. The kick by Ty Long is blocked. It's the third. Kick block for the Stampeders. Charleston Hughes dropped it. Derek Wigan picks it up, and he gets drilled there by Micah Awe. But another punt block by the Stampeders, and this time it was Jagarit Davis. Jagarit Davis back in the lineup, coming off the six-game injured, coming off this left side. Pressure from the left, they block it to the right, and Ja'Garrett Davis just runs through the block of Ricky Foley. Foley, who is new to that punt team. So once again, terrific field position for Calgary. And they hand it off to Messam. Purifoy there to bring him down around the 39, and Messam has four. Leads the team, six touchdowns, all rushing the ball for Jerome Messam and 5.1 yard average. Only one game this year, Dave Dickinson gave him less than 10 carries. He's averaged over the last couple of games over 15 in his 100 yard game versus Saskatchewan. 28 carries that game for Jerome Messam. Second and six, here comes pressure. Mark and Michelle's got that, and a Calgary first down at the Lion 30. There's one that'll get these two on track. Nice timing route on the dig from the outside and the short side of the field. And the timing there on the throw, nice lane to throw it in. Bo Levi Mitchell looks off the coverage and then goes backside to Michelle. Average field position start for Calgary in this first quarter. The Lion 54 yard line, a big pitch return, a interception return, walk kick, and now Messam tripped up behind the line of scrimmage. He gets dropped for a loss. Well, we put the spotlight on two tailbacks tonight in Jerome Messam and in Jeremiah Johnson, but there are also two great middle linebackers playing against those tailbacks tonight. And Solomon Elamimian, who leads the league in tackles, he's up against Messam tonight, so we'll watch that matchup. The run stopper in the middle against the Messam Express at 260 pounds. And then, of course, Alex Singleton up against Jeremiah Johnson when it's a Calgary D on the field on the BCO. Second and long, Mitchell in trouble, throwing for Michelle, and he brings it down. Nice catch there. Over top of Ronnie Yell. 20 yards and a Calgary first down. Yeah, sometimes it just takes one. You know, it just takes one good timing route, throw and catch, and then the confidence in there is there, and Bo had to spin out of there to buy himself some more time, but he does, gets it done, throws it up, and gives his receiver a chance. That's a serious vertical right there. High points that brings it down at the line 11 yard line. Double tight end set. And a little trouble on that snap. Picked up by Messam and he gets a <laughs> yard or two. Not the way they drew it up. Well, that that's the strangest handoff you'll ever see. A wildcat from a different species of wildcat. A little tip from Mitchell. Volleys it to him. And then Messam will take the pile. Three, four BC tacklers for a couple of yards. 
Boy, how about Andrew Harris doing that last night in Winnipeg? Over 100 rushing and receiving for the first time in his terrific career. Second and nine. Short drop. And the slate pattern is dropped by Michelle and by Purifoy. Oh, baby. Purifoy was thinking about a touchdown. He was 110 yards away, but <laughs> he, was, he had a clear route, didn't well, he? Well, he had no one except Bo Levi Mitchell to catch him. And he was headed downhill in the right direction. He took a little peek. Tough catch for Michelle. But when it's tipped like that, there's always someone behind you trying to play that tip, and Purifoy just flat drops it. Wow. Another stop for the Lions defense. Another field goal by Paredes. And a 9-0 lead here for Calgary on the final play of the opening quarter. So the Lions trying to be better than they were a week ago. A drop by Michelle that could have meant early points. A takeaway, a block kick, and a 9-0 Calgary lead. TSN CFL Fantasy wants to put you in the GM seat. All season long, you can set your roster and go head-to-head -head with CFL fans and the CFL on TSN panel. This is no easy task. Sign up at cflfantasy.tsn.ca to win great weekly prizes, including the grand prize, a trip to Ottawa to watch the 105th Grey Cup presented by Shaw. Touchdown! TSN CFL Fantasy. Set your roster today. For the past eight years, Kraft Heinz Project Play has helped communities across Canada build better places to play. You could be the winners of a $250,000 recreational facility upgrade. Nominate your community today. With Chef's Plate, get fresh ingredients and step-by-step -step recipes delivered to your door so you can spend more time with those that matter most. Get $30 off your first order at chefsplate.com slash cook. We are a league as diverse as a country. A league of Jacksons and Quangs, Eliminians and Messams, Moscas, Custises, Sinopolis, Shigares and Burrises. A league of Reeds, Rices, O'Shea's and Awusuwansas. A league where what makes each of us different makes all of us stronger. Nine-point Calgary lead after 15 minutes. Feels like it could be a bigger lead than that. Uh, could be a lot worse. And the Calgary Stampeders, Michelle dropped two touchdown passes in that first quarter. Really flat drops. Stampeders could have a big lead here for the BC Lions. Not one first down in that first quarter. They've got to go back to basics. Jeremiah Johnson, good success on first down. They, they picked up where they left off, off offensively. Perry Silkowski uh, mentioned some of the fans already chanting for Travis Lule, and you wonder how long the leash might be. Wally Bono wants to give Jennings every opportunity to get going, but a tepid first quarter. I mean, the last time these, this team played at home, they had 535 yards of offense. But a very quiet opening quarter. Here's Rainey from the 10. And Rainey just out beyond the 25-yard line. Well, Chris Rainey plays on that offense occasionally and has more over the last few games. Maybe that's the spark plug they need. Put him on offense and give him a couple of those little hit screens, high percentage throws, get the confidence up for Jonathan Jennings and, and maybe get the speedster and Rainey involved. Won't be on this first down as he heads to the sideline, but that might be a catalyst. Saw the time of possession. Lions had won the T.O.P. in six of seven games, but not last week. Under 28 minutes of possession in Saskatchewan. Big to Johnson. The slant for Arsenal and a first down up around the 44-yard line to get the Lions off the schneid in that department. First first down of the game for the B.C. Lions. Little play action to Jeremiah Johnson. Freezes the linebackers for second and Singleton and right in behind him. 
Manny Arsenal with an 18-yard catch. Sort of the back to basics you were talking about. Yeah. First and 10. Johnson stayed in. Arsenal another catch. And they may lean on the big guy tonight without Brian Burnham or Nick Moore. Well, Nick Moore was injured last week in the game. Brian Burnham during the work week in practice and was a late scratch against Saskatchewan. But yeah, I mean, Brian Burnham with the the big start to the season, their number one receiver. Arsenal's been right in the middle. Three completions, all three to Arsenal. Jennings hit as he released. That's up and for the grabs and incomplete. Singleton thought he had another interception. But the pressure from up front forces Jennings and the Lions off the field. Yeah, he, his arm got hit. That ball popped straight up in the air. The Vodder's off the edge. Yeah, grabbing that right arm. And that. A running back waiting for it, standing there waiting for it, not going to high point the ball. Ty Long gets this one away. Good boot. Finch back at his seven, a 54 yard punt. And the cover team gets it done. Buddy Jackson, a former Stampeder, was down there first. So the Stampeders will start deeper for the first time. Jerome Messam, five carries so far in the game, the number one rusher coming in to week nine. Burger King. Try the new Bacon King. Two juicy flame grilled 100% beef patties and six, count them, six strips of thick cut smoked bacon topped with a sesame seed bun. The Bacon King. There's no such thing as too much bacon. Only at Burger King. Kia has been in Canada for 18 years, but you made us Canadian by showing us the great outdoors and reminding us that beauty can't fit on a postcard. So Kia is bringing you the Our Canada Celebration event featuring Sorrento, adventurous and fun with Dynamax all-wheel drive and panoramic sunroof. The Forte and Forte 5 road trip ready with Apple CarPlay and heated and cooled seats for any season. So thanks, Canada. You really are the best. Offer ends August 31st. Kia.ca for details. A lot can happen in an instant. Play New X Money today for a chance to win one of 12 prizes of $1 million. Leading rusher, leading tackler. Good matchup here tonight. Messam versus Elamibian. The BC Lions have given up some big plays through the air, but they're the number one team in the league coming in defensively against the run. Up against the leading rusher, so should be physical from tackle to tackle tonight between these two. Three tackles for Elamimian. Messam 25 yards away from 5,000 in his career. Snap start inside their 10. Here comes Heat. Mitchell puts that up and Michelle loose again. And Anthony Thompson will bump him out at the Calgary bench around the 49-yard line. It's a 40-yard Pick up to the deep threat, Michelle. Starts out in the slot, and that's a fullback that's beside him. So he knows right now he's got his own look because no linebacker stepped out to take him. Well, Chandler Fenner ended up doing it. It is a man look, and he goes over the top on the corner out. Third catch, 68 yards. Oh. Stephen Clark took that first. <laughs> He was a big mouth bass in the middle of the lake right there. Grab that hook. Now Messam trying to find a hole as he crosses the 50 and may have two. Yeah, when I caught the number that it was Chandler Fenner out there covering Rob Cote, that means it's man to man. And Stephen Clark, now watch this move again. This is Michelle. Watch this hard post. Look at him jump inside, anticipating the post. 
And he goes back to the corner. That's one in the live well. See if Stephen Clark can bounce back from that. Clark in his third start at field corner. Second and eight. And pre-snap movement. And a time count, time count violation, violation against Calgary. Calgary. Number 19. That's a five-yard penalty. Remains second down. A little residue from the bye showing on the Stampeders despite the nine-point lead. Yeah, well, they got in their own way a little bit in that first quarter, that's for sure. A couple drops. It could be 21-0 very easily at this point. Lions defense kind of hanging on and offensively haven't really got a lot of momentum yet. Calgary's won six of seven against BC in three of their last four visits to BC Place. Lockett collapsing. McDaniel incomplete and another potential interception goes by the boards. Anthony Thompson couldn't hang on. Well, I'm going to just say it. The BC Lions have a confidence issue and it's on both sides of the ball. Luchez Purifoy dropped what could have been a 100-yard interception return for a touchdown. Anthony Thompson drops a pick. Those are plays that add up. Offensively already one inter interception for Jonathan Jennings. They've got a confidence issue. Aver angling it away from Rainey, a short kick taken by Iannuzzi. And a 40-yard punt by Maver. So a potential turnover. Dropped by Thompson. BC football, though, when we come back. Coming up at halftime on the GMC Professional Great Playbook, Henry Burris on the disappearance of small receivers. I mean, you can't find them and they run by you, or... We're seeing less of them in the league. You'll have to tune in. Chris Williams would be considered yeah. a small receiver at 5'9", yes. 155. I haven't seen him yet. We see him now. Nice catch. Short Gein working against Tommy Campbell on the corner. Yeah, just 5'9", as you mentioned, and but can fly. Can flat out run. And in that Saskatchewan game with Burnham down and Nick Moore. Burnham and Nick Moore gone down. He got targeted 13 times. That's the good news for Lions fans. The bad news for Lions fans, they only caught six. A couple of deep ones. So it was 95 yards. Jennings wants to get on track. He needs to get it to Williams and Arsenal. Four receivers to the near side. Early movement. Uh, Vodder suggesting he was drawn offside. So the officials will confer was their movement on that left side of the BC Lions offensive line. Procedure BC number 69. It's a five yard penalty remains second down. Saw second year man Charles Viancourt leaning back prior to the snap. Left side of that old line reworked. Vine court working with Antonio Johnson. No Hunter Stewart has an arm injury. So it changes the ratio with two import offensive linemen looking for their first second down conversion. They're all for four. Rainey out of the backfield makes the first man miss and then gets driven forward to the 45, but he'll be short of the first down. But that's an example for Jonathan Jennings, that play. They didn't get the first down, but it's an example of, of a good decision against the defense he was facing. That was three-man pressure, dropping nine, dumping to a guy like Rainey. He makes one more guy miss. He gets the first down on his own. You throw it into coverage, and you try and go deep in that kind of defense, you're going to throw four interceptions. Four, two and out for the Lions already. Long launching, pitch. Back at his 14-yard line, a 52-yard punt. And he brings it back to the 19 where Fenner makes the tackle. Well, Wally Buono's got to get his guys back to feeling it. They got to get back and feeling that confidence because right now that demon self-doubt is crawling around in their head. That's a catch that 
Jeremiah Johnson makes it his sleep. He dropped that one. This is a chance for Purefoy, not only an interception, but a long return. This is a chance for Thompson. Easy catch off the tip, and they're not making those routine plays right now. That's a confidence issue. Strange because just over a week ago, they were riding a four-game win streak. It went sour last Sunday, a short week, and they're slow to the gate here. Mitchell pumps once. Long out, and it is incomplete. Anthony Parker got it on a hop. There was some pressure. I think Purefoy may have got a piece of Mitchell's arm. Ball trapped underneath there. There was official right on the spot. Well, there had been some drops, but Mitchell just five of his first 13. Looking to convert on second down. Stands in the pocket. And that's out of the range of McDaniel. And he doesn't look 100% either in this first half, does he? No, you're right. He's had a couple of drops, so that may be part of it. I want to show you how Purifoy here steps out and helps out on Michelle on this in route. He's been the number one target so far for Bull Levi Mitchell. But you see Purifoy jumps him from inside out, almost double teaming him. They had another guy line up on him on the outside, and then as he made that inside cut, Purifoy jumped him, trying to take away that target for Bull Levi Mitchell. I should get good field position. Maver, good boot. Backpedaling is Ianuzzi. And up to the 49-yard line after a 49-yard putt. And, excuse me, that was Chris Williams. And there's Jeremiah Johnson. Touchdown leader in the league coming into week nine with seven. Trying to ignite this sputtering BC line offense. Football highlights catch it Tuesday, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Chris Williams on the hitch. And he'll get wrapped up by Jameer Thurman near midfield. Lions were blank for the opening three quarters last week in Saskatchewan. They were trailing 32-0 in the Western Final against Calgary and slow out of the gate here again tonight. Hit screen away to get a little confidence. High percentage throw. Chris Williams do the heavy lifting on that one and get in a second and medium here. Second and five with Shaq Murray Lawrence in the backfield. Three-man rush. Jennings throws. And does Iannuzzi hang on? They say incomplete. Again, routine plays. And they're taking turns. You know, it's Jeremiah Johnson. It's Iannuzzi. Ball thrown very well. He had both hands and arms around it. And he was stripped by Siante Evans. Just didn't secure it. They say he never had control on the way down, and then ball hit the turf. One first down, five two and outs for the Lions so far. Ty Long trying to pin them here. Outside the numbers, and Finch will get the 15 yard no yards penalty. Well, the BC Lions are lucky to be where they are right now in this game at 9 0 and keep messing around with Bull Levi Mitchell and this Calgary Stampede no yards. team. BC, number three, 15 yard penalty, first down, Calgary. Well, Bull Levi Mitchell was watching last Sunday and did not want to read too much into a bad Lions performance. And right after the game, this was the message he had for his teammates. Yeah, you, you can't. Take that and, and say that that's going to be the same BC Lions team they face, although they they are really not that much different than last week, the Lions. Just Calgary hasn't capitalized on it yet. Started the 25, hitch to Michelle, back into traffic and up to the 35 where he is close to a first down. So he's been the focal point of this Calgary offense tonight. 
Come in with short yardage now, so Andrew Buckley will come into the offensive huddle. Nice here move by Michelle to come inside and then put the brakes on and then back out to get another three or four and get close to that marker. Fourth catch for 78 and here's Buckley as they dig in and he pushes forward. Didn't need much and should have the first down behind Ukambre Williams, Shane Bergman, and Brad Erdos. Interesting, Dave Dickinson, throughout the work week, I was reading some of his clips and looking at some of his interviews throughout the week, and he, he wasn't real happy with the execution no. during practice, the Calgary Stampeders. And I thought, you know, it may be just a sort of a psychological ploy to, to, to not take the BC Lions lightly based on their last game. But their execution has been off a little bit. First down, fly sweep. Michelle dropped and picked it up and gets drilled at the 40 after four, four yards. That was an adventure. Yeah, exactly. I and mean, this is just, you know, just off a little bit in that Mark and Michelle here is too fast. Like, he, he hit that too fast, and the timing was off, and, and Bo Levi Mitchell barely got it to him, so he gets it on the one off, and then Sullivan Elamimian take advantage of that hesitation and just drop him after a four or five yard gain. Wow, I, that one hurt me. Second and six, five receivers out. Flag comes down, and did they get the play off? Time count violation, Calgary, number 19. It's a five yard penalty, remains second down. Well, the second time in this game, a time count violation against the Calgary offense. Execution a little off. So an unusual number of penalties for the least penalized team of the league. Second and 11. Up, up. Mitchell down the sidelines, got Michelle, can't make the catch. Had him in the hole there, but just threw it to the backside shoulder and, and took the receiver, Michelle, out of bounds. Boy, he was open in that hole. If that ball is just a little bit more inside. He's got a shot at it and a big gain. Juggling as he went out of bounds and then Bo knows him. Mitchell now six for 16. Avert with the punt. It's Rainey from the 35, a 40 yard punt. And Rainey brought down after maybe five on the return. William Longley was down in a hurry on the teams. Dave Dickinson concerned with the execution issues during the practice week, but shouldn't be concerned this team's record coming out of a bye doesn't get any better than 14 and 0 coming out of a bye week and 8 and 0 on the road so they they have history on their side and a 9 nothing lead here tonight could be worse but they're not going to be off that track for very much longer it's too well of a coach football team Jennings a lot of time anybody Open and now on a roll throwing back and out of bounds as everybody was covered that time and Jonathan Jennings couldn't find a receiver. Well, it, you know, this is what I'm talking about. This is a precision game. He's he's now talking to receivers. He's starting to hear the boo birds a little bit here in BC Place. And watch just off this top though. This is a play action run to Jeremiah Johnson, and one of them went the wrong way. Jeremiah Johnson goes one way. And, and John Jennings goes the other, so that wasn't right. Now the route downfield isn't what he wants, so he, he has to just throw it outside and out of bounds. But And a holding call moves them back 10, so they look at first and 20. Wally Bono trying to let him play through it. Draw play for 
Johnson, and he gets back across the 35. Chris, right after that last play, our cameras picked up this. Wally Buono looking at Travis Lule and, and that discussion beginning. I think they were discussing that play, that specific play, and what the receiver did or didn't do. But and again, how much of this is a couple of regulars, Brian Burnham and Nick Moore, not in the lineup, but maybe the routes not being run the same way. Here's a wide open Shaq Johnson at midfield. Here's the biggest offensive play for the BC Lions as Shaq Johnson takes it to the Calgary 46. Biggest offensive play and best throw in a game and a half for Jonathan Jennings. He had to put some heat on this, get it over a defender, and drop it into Shaq Johnson on the sideline. And what a precise throw that was. 28 for Johnson in a first down. Play action fake. Chris Williams on the slant. Close to another first down at the Calgary 36 at the three-minute warning. Did you see this, the heat on that last throw? Suddenly, oh. perhaps a little Knife traction. It in there. Knife it in there. Back in the studio, three minutes to halftime. Coming up, we're going to talk about the two quarterbacks, that situation with BC, uh, the Lions, though, on the move. But what of Jonathan Jennings and Travis Lule? And also, Bowley by Mitchell. Not great numbers, however, the subtleties that he does very well. That's coming up as we go back to CC and Suits. Okay, Rod, this first half can change here in the final three minutes. The Lions with back to back first downs. And maybe a play play a quarterback draw and he gets tossed down immediately to Garrett Davis there but it looked like Calgary was offside and that last break newcomer Maurice Morgan outside. who's in for Calgary, Nick Moore was talking there to Marco Iannuzzi back and forth throughout the break and Iannuzzi I'm sure is just making sure he understands exactly where he needs to be you can see them talking back he's okay that's me pointing to himself make sure he understands the play and what his role in the play is. Morgan played a preseason game against Calgary, had three catches for 54 yards. Does, does that help in any way? Get him accustomed to what he's seeing tonight? First and five. Pass to Ryan Nutzi and he'll show him how it's done to well, move the chain. And he was the decoy, so that's probably what they were talking about. The second play we call in this next series is going to be that little curl to me, and you've got to run through the defense and try and pull coverage, which he did, executed well. There he goes. Maurice Morgan straight through, and right underneath him, I need you with the curl. Arsenal had the first three catches for BC, but now four different receivers. Jennings with pressure, and... Chris Williams tied up there by Tommy Campbell. It's incomplete. Based on the blitz, Tommy Campbell knew that Jennings had to throw it immediately, so he jumped that quick slant by Chris Williams. But if you're if you're BC, you're registering that one and telling Williams on the next blitz they see the similar blitz. Two hard steps inside and straight down the field on a go run. Same matchup down at the bottom of your screen. Staff's looking for a stop here, second and ten. Jennings time underneath. It's Jeremiah Johnson with a cutback inside for a first down to the ten. Fourth consecutive first down on the drive for BC. Well, if Jonathan Jennings, even if he settles for a field goal here, but if he finishes this drive with a major, it may be the drive that keeps him on the field in the second half. Wally Buono clearly was talking to Travis Lule. Didn't have him warming up yet. But this might be the drive that gets him back to that second half. Well, he lost the ball there at the end of that hit. He's cut back by Johnson to create the first down. And now the ninth play at the drive into the red zone. Number one team in the red zone. Big to Shaq Murray Lawrence. It's Rainey inside the five and dropped at the two-yard line by the middle linebacker, Singleton. It's funny when, when a guy like Chris Rainey starts to make those moves and he's 
juking and he's head faking and all those things that the, those talented runners do. A lot of DBs will kind of dance with them, trying to line them up. Middle linebackers no. don't do that. They just come straight and make a point. And just hit them. Look at this. Wow. Short week, but a different <laughs> formation that we've not seen before. Johnson Plumptree not going to get there. Wow. But a flag down. And that in the usual area of offside defense. Or did the Lions with that super power right. nuclear eye formation not get settled and line up properly? You're right. Looks like that is the case. And there's the power eye with two <laughs> backs in the backfield, and then there's that. Wow. Clearly, they didn't get settled in. The eyes have it. Now there's some chirping going on in the trenches. A heated conversation going on. Micah Johnson in the middle of it. That's eligible. Seems to be some confusion of what down it is. They've got third down up on the. Well, if they decline the penalty, they keep it on the one yard line. It's third down. But it's third and inches. And the Lions can get a first down without scoring a touchdown. Back base on the placement here. Well, they want to measure it. They want to measure that's it because what they think to, they've got yeah. a first down. Yeah, that's what they're trying to do. They're, you're right. And that's the only reason that that ball is in between the one-yard line and the goal line because it'll always be brought back to the one. And Calgary uh, took the option of losing it down here, I believe. And it might cost them because it's first down. First down. <laughs> Dave Dickinson wants to get the officials' attention. Well, that was unusual. So after all that, it's first down, and we might not see that power eye again. And Jeremiah Johnson with seven touchdowns on the season. In behind Jennings. Marini in motion. It'll be Jennings, and second effort, touchdown. His first of the year, and maybe the Lions' biggest of the season. Yeah, this is a big one, an important drive, not only for the Lions and their confidence, but for Jonathan Jennings. I mean, he may have been a series away from Surrender in the, the position for the rest of the game, or at least that third quarter to Travis Lule. Puts a drive together that started with a tremendous throw to Shaq Johnson. Uh, the type of th a throw that gives you confidence as a quarterback and finishes the drive with a touchdown. 11 plays, 69 yards, and now they'll go for two, six for nine on two point attempts this year. Morgan and Arsenal on the waggle to the right side. And Jennings connects. He's got Williams for two, and it's a one-point game. And maybe a measure of confidence back in the young BC quarterback. Well, there was just a different jump in his step and, and more heat on the throws. He, he was not aiming on that last drive, but just letting it go. And, and when you look at this first one, to Shaq Johnson, over coverage, to drop it in with that zip, and then a slant route right there to Chris Williams, that had tons of heat on it. Throws that curl to Jeremiah Johnson, he picks up a first. But just the, the deliberate throwing motion and actions by Jonathan Jennings. Different guy than that first quarter, first quarter and a half. The 
two for Williams to make it a one-point game. Here with 1-11 to go in the opening half. Two quarterbacks and Kahari Jones will review what they've just seen as they try to crack the Calgary code. I know all the quarterbacks and especially backup quarterbacks will be looking at the tablets between drives. I'm not sure there's any that does it as much and in as much detail as Travis Lule does. Here's Finch from the 15. Cuts back inside. Buddy Jackson holding on, and he gets swarmed there at the 26. Whether he's playing or not, he's contributing. And, you know, I, again, I all the games we've done, Chris, I'm watching on the sideline, the quarterback's going through it. Of course, they're looking at it, but but he is studying it like he's breaking down film and helping Jonathan Jennings and even Kahari Jones, the play caller. And he's not the kind of guy to be on the bench warming up in the bullpen to try and get the coach to exactly no he's not going to do that not unless he gets the nod. Well, let's see what Bo does with this final minute and change. One point game throwing an out and again I, I'm just not sure we've seen Bo Levi Mitchell. Yeah. struggle as much as he has and it's almost been overshadowed by Jennings but he's now six of 17. Yeah and I, well, I'm going to remind everyone again about the four drops two for touchdowns yep in those incompletions and that doesn't help the confidence of a quarterback but two for eight second and ten stands in the pocket Look out. Out. it's picked off and it's Purifoy who brings it down. And a last-minute interception gives Jennings the football in field goal range. He didn't step out. He should be in field goal range. Took way too long for Bull Levi Mitchell here. By this time, routes were run, and now the defense is just making up ground. Same break in the same zone defense from Purifoy. Remember early in the game? Made that break and a knockdown on Michelle. That time he played the ball, took it out of bounds. Chance for more points for BC. Fourth interception thrown by Mitchell this year. Just his second in the last five games. Ryan football at the Calgary 41. Jennings back to work. Underneath the drop and a holding call. Upcoming, I believe, against BC. Alex Singleton doing a little talking to Jeremiah Johnson over there. We just reminded him that Holding he dropped it. BC, number 62. It's a 10 yard penalty, remains first down. Cody Husband, the center, I believe, on Junior Turner back in the Calgary lineup after recovering from offseason knee surgery. Yeah, great to see him back. It's a long way to come back when you blow out your knee like that. Junior Turner back in the middle of that defense. Great to see it. First and 20, back at the 51. And that one picked off. Siante Evans has got it. So they trade interceptions here. Ayanuzzi the tackle, but Evans has his second of the season off the corner. And Jennings and the receiver not on the same page on that one. Well, and, and you know, I, I'm going to put a little bit on the play calling here, too. I mean, you get the interception here, BC Lions, and you're in field goal range with the ball and less than a minute left in the half. Ty Long's longest on the season is 50, so he was within his range. A couple of running plays, kick a field goal, you take the lead going into halftime. Now it's unraveled again. That momentum you build to feel the BC Lions just disappeared. Second chance for Mitchell. Puts it over the middle. Heavy traffic and McDaniel can't hang on. He was surrounded. Almost feels like it, both teams need the break here at halftime. You know, it, it's, it's been muddy. This game has been muddy. And, and we're playing in the, under the tent here. I don't even think the roof's open. Mitchell now two of his last ten with an interception. Words we don't think we put in the same sentence with both Levi Mitchell exactly. in a long time, if ever. Second and ten. 
Pressure coming. Gets away. Flag comes down. Pass is caught by Daniels in Lion territory, but it's coming back on a hold. All right, Mitchell wanted that one too. I mean, he's he was looking at 25 seconds thinking that one gets us. Holding Calgary, number 65. Ten-yard penalty, remains second and down. Gets us a throw away from a field goal of our own going in at halftime. And Dan Fetter, Kyle, the right tackle on the hold. Took a while. He had to take roll to, to that wide position, then hit someone that's on the ground. And I think he drew the flag there. Second and 20 now. Four man rush, draw to mess him and nothing doing. Well, he bounces off first contact. And then is brought down at the 30, and we've got another flag with 18 seconds left. Josh Shirley first to make contact with Messam. And a holding call will be declined. Cases like this, when both teams or your team isn't, just isn't quite right, you lean on your leaders. I'm going to make a quick prediction. For the Calgary Stampeders. Calgary, number 69. Penalties declined. Third down. For the Calgary Stampeders, I think they're going to come back in this second half and lean on Mark Way McDaniel. And Bo Levi Mitchell go back to that sort of safety blanket, that guy that he's always had, knows where he's at, precise route runner, and get that veteran to settle things down. You know, for the BC Lions, for the BC Lions on offense, they can find Manny Arsenal. Get him and lean on him a little bit. That's what you do when things aren't quite right. Lean on your leaders. Mitchell taking a knee to run it out in a, a first half that was not what we expected. Three field goals for Calgary, squandering great field position in the first quarter. A late Lion touchdown, one point at the half. Here's Rod, the guys. Thank you, Chris. You and Glenn pretty well said it there. Uh, a muddy game so far. Kind of tough to figure out right now. And Calgary had a chance to have a much better lead. But field goals instead of touchdowns. Milt Stiegel, Matt Dunnigan here. Let's start with the Lions quarterback situation where we thought maybe there'd be a change. And then Jennings started to get it going a little bit. How would you assess the way he's played, though? Well, you talked about it. Uh, he did have a nice drive resulting in a touchdown but for the most part Jennings just hadn't looked comfortable and I don't know he's had why the reason why that has happened but he's not in tune with his team right now you know he's making some bad throws this was almost interception uh, he's not looking like he can handle the pressure I don't know if the fact that he knows that he has a good backup quarterback uh, as a result of this but he has to get it together you see the interception right there and that may not all be his fault that was a tough catch but it just happened to get a bad bump and then right here, a little pressure on him. And it's not, like I said, it's not all on him, but Jennings hadn't showed me enough where you can say he's our guy. Uh, this play right here, there was a mix-up in the route, but it's still an interception. Uh, he's looking okay, but he's panicking. And I wouldn't be surprised if they come out in the second half. I think he's still going to be in the game, don't get me wrong, but he's going to have to show Wally that he can get it done. If not... We'll see a change in the second half at oh, some point. Okay, interesting to see. How about Bo Levi Mitchell? Let's look at the numbers. Six of 19. He'd probably rather you not look at the numbers because this is the lowest completion percentage of any time of his career at 32%. And yet you can't blame him for everything here. And there were some things you saw in yeah. the half that, that, that you did like, though. Right? Just yeah, just like Jonathan Jennings last week, threw four interceptions and things weren't working out for him. First half here, he's struggling again. Um, it happens that way sometimes, guys, from playing that position. You know, you get drops. You're not on point. You're not, ball's not coming out the way you want to. You're not seeing things clearly. You're not anticipating properly. It happens, and we're seeing it, you know, in back-to-back -back games with a young, good quarterback. Bo Levi Mitchell is struggling. I've never seen him, but I want to focus on one good play for these quarterbacks and, 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 and talk about this because Bo sees this jailbreak coming in scot-free, and he doesn't panic. He steps out of the tire, as all quarterbacks know how to do, and he, and he gets to the edge. And then watch this here. This is beautiful. His hips are going to the boundary. He drops his throwing angle, and he slings one to Mark and Michelle. Beautiful. Watch this angle. This is absolutely 
absolutely insane. This is just a quarterback guy not panicking, trusting the receiver, and this is the prettiest. Look at that. Look at that arm angle. That is some serious torque and confidence in a player that you've only played a couple of weeks with right. in Mark and Michelle. That's a good play. Uh, not many of them in the first half, but we're trying to be positive here. Right. <laughs> and, and, you know, but seriously, it's been a tough week on quarterbacks. Not, yes. not many people played well other than the kid in the Winnipeg Blue Bomber uniform, Matt Nichols. Right now, these quarterbacks are struggling in week nine. Both of them are struggling. And maybe Calgary's suffering a little bit from that bye week. Maybe they haven't overcome it yet. But we know how they play when they're playing at their best. Both of these are solid defenses, too. Let's give yeah. those boys credit. They're playing on the back end as well. Okay. When we come back, we're going to have highlights of... Another loss by the Ticats, a win, though, for the Ottawa Red Blacks. We'll be back here on Friday Night Football on TSN. With the Stamps leading by one. BC close. They still trail by one at the half. Here's Matty with the stats. Yeah, thanks, Rod. I drew the short straw on this one. Offensively, these look like two series types of stats. Look at this. 116, 106 yards passing. That's usually a couple series. Come on, guys. Get it together in the second half. Yeah, rough first half for Bowley by Mitchell, standing by with Perry Solkowski. Well, you go into the locker room with the lead by one, but there's probably a long list of things you want to clean up. What's at the top of that after the first half? Uh, red zone. I mean, uh, just making sure we're putting points up. Defense, special teams, everybody did a great job right there getting us the ball. Um, we just can't do our own thing. I, uh, us as an offense collectively, we all have to buckle down and do our own thing. I got to make some of those throws. Um, we just got to keep putting the ball in the end zone. It was good to get the break, but do you think we're seeing a little bit of a residual effect because the timing being off? No, I don't think so. I mean, I think uh, I think we've been locked in. Um, DC's doing a good job showing us some different looks. Uh, we have to continue to stick to the details. We'll be all right. Thanks. Appreciate it. The Stamps' first four possessions, three ended in field goals, but boy, they could have had some touchdowns too. A few drops. Close game, though. Second half about to begin here on TSN. One point Calgary lead as we get set for the second half. Let's. Find out what Wally Buono thought of the first half with Perry Sokowski. Wally, what was the biggest message that you sent at halftime? Well, let's not hurt ourselves. I mean, right now we're uh, hurting ourselves as much as, you know, they're uh, hurting us. So, you know, we got to stay away from the penalties and our offense. We got to execute. It wasn't all on Jonathan. That second to last drive got you into the end zone. But is the leash getting shorter as he struggled early on? Well, again, you got to understand that some of the issues aren't him. The receivers are not uh, doing the right routes. And, you know, he's got to trust what they're doing. So he can't worry about that. He's got to make the throw. And the receiver's got to be in the right place. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Ten turnovers now for the Lions in the last six quarters, three in that first half. Did see like seem like there was some communication issues, yep. some route running issues for the BC Lions and for the Calgary Stampeders. Just took just time to just off a little bit. I'm going way out on a limb suggesting the second half's going to be better for both teams. Rainey across the 30 to the 32-yard line. Charlie Power down first. And there's the numbers for Jennings, who got off to a rock, rocky start and had that one touchdown drive of 11 plays. Yeah, most of the yards in, that you saw in that stat line were from that one drive. Only five rushes for the Lions in the first half. Jeremiah Johnson, three for nine. And they start two back with Holy Lambala in the backfield and hand it off. Johnson, they're waiting on him. And nothing doing. Jagera Davis stepped up. Jameer Thurman there, and not much for Jeremiah Johnson. No, but getting him involved, good idea. And you're not always going to break one, but you got to just keep that balance in there if possible. Mont Claybrooks has his guys playing well against the run this year. And gets guys like Jagarit Davis back and Junior Turner, and that helps in a big, big way. Okay, Johnson second to 10. Jennings has Arsenal open, and he reaches, trying to break the plane of the first down as he was escorted out by Adelike, the safety. 
It's going to be close enough that Wally Guano might send in the short yardage here. I think he gets right to the, just shy of the marker when he reaches, up to the 40. They'll sort of split the difference. They don't give him the 41, though, and because of it, Wally Bono is going to punt on third and, well, almost two. Yeah, well, once you get to that, you get to the two-yard mark, you got to punt it away. Oh. Calgary and Long just got that away. He fully was laid onto the field, and I think that threw the ire of the head coach, a 49-yard punt. And now Mitchell will try and bounce back from an uncharacteristic first half, six of 19. Heard him talking about red zone production. Three field goals in the opening four series for Calgary. Just seven carries for Jerome Messam in that first half. Mentioned only the one game this year that he was under double figures in carries. That was against Montreal in the loss in Montreal. That game, Bo Levi Mitchell threw 50 times. Messam came in with 302 yards in his last three starts, and they start with him up the middle. Not much. Again, he's closing in on 5,000 career yards. He, I think he's about five away as Elamimian has a word or two for the guy he's zeroed in on. Sixth tackle, by the way, for Solomon Elamimian. He's on pace for 12 on the night, as is Alex Singleton for the Calgary Stampeders. As the two linebackers try to talk these teams out of running the ball. Seven and eight. Pressure on, and Craig Ward breaks it down. But the horse collar tackle will negate the sack, I believe. Yeah, you're right. Major foul, unnecessary roughness. Horse collar tackle, 93 BC, 15 yards from the original line of scrimmage. Automatic first down. Real wide get off from outside on Fader Kyle, and then there's that's textbook. I mean that that's you can't grab the back of the jersey and pull him down backwards. Whether it's jersey or the collar. Well, can you around the numbers as opposed to the I think the he hardest. was at the nameplate. It looked like he was at the nameplate to me, and that's... Well, Wally Buono wants to have a look. I'm... Did, did, he, only, did he, he challenge that? interested to see if this is an official challenge or if they're just discussing what they may challenge and if Kim Murphy the head ref talks him out of BC it. BC is challenging the previous play for roughing the passer. We'll review the play. Well because it's roughing the passer it is challengeable and Wally Buono thinking that it's more on the numbers than on the harness. After review, the ruling on the field stands. BC has charged a team timeout. The first down. So the Lions don't have a challenge now, and it becomes a 32-yard difference from where he was brought down. I, I don't think, I'm not sure why Wally Buono challenged that. I mean, it, it's, I don't think it's close. The, the, the call on the field, is what it was, a horse collar. Here's Messam on the screen. Well, I think the debate is, is it the actual collar or at what point down nameplate number can you grab the jersey and pull a player down? And well, I think that's what he was arguing, that it was lower than the, the actual collar, but not yeah, the way the officials rule. Yeah, and it was, it was back in the shoulder blade area. It doesn't have to be the shoulder pads that you grab. It can be pulling from behind the jersey, and Bo Levi Mitchell went backwards. I, I yeah. didn't, it didn't look at all to me like it was a question. 
Mets mess of finally find some real estate and the big guy plows down to the line 40 and with that gain Jerome Messam over 5,000 in his career. Good hole this time to the play side. Good double team right in the middle there like Shane Bergman. With a nice job on his man. I was trying to find who picked up Solomon Elaminian because it's been Elaminian tackling Messam every every play so far. He wasn't around on that one. Give it back to Messam. This time stuffed behind the line of scrimmage back at the 41. Max Ford limps off after being involved in the play. So second and 11. Sixth play of the drive as the Lions fan try and disrupt Mitchell's under duress, throws underneath, ball caught. And Devaris Daniels is stopped short at the 40-yard line by Stephen Clark. 47-yarder for Paredes, who's longest is 47 on the season, but within his range here. Pocket collapsed around Bo Levi Mitchell to where he had no choice but to dump it. So looking for his fourth of the night. hits it and it's a four-point Calgary lead on their first possession of this second half all the points coming off the foot of Rennie Paredes for Calgary so far so after the field goal this time the Lions opt to take it at the 35 yard line short drop for Jennings but nothing available and now Gets it out for Chris Williams. Cutting back and takes a hit at the 45 and should have a first down. Gets her on the run for Jonathan Jennings, but he, he took off and ran quickly. I think he's got it in his head now that in order to, to get some room and get some throwing lanes, he's going to have to create them on his own a little bit. Help out his O-line by moving the launch point. He, he got out of that pocket quickly there. Now 14 to 21. Williams five catches, but all of the short variety so far. On a roll again. Flushed back by Wigan. Looks the other way. Got a block there on Micah Johnson. And Jennings falls forward to around the 50 and has close to five. Yeah, it's, you can see he's, he's taken a, a one count in the pocket. If his first or second read, 1-1,000, one, I'm out of there. And he starts to get on the move. That's what happens when you're coming off a game with 14 quarterback pressures and four sacks. End of the last three games, Calgary has allowed an average of 202 yards of offense. So they've been stingy. A slant pattern there and a good strong hands by Williams to hold on with Tommy Campbell. On his back. Like the end of that play. Tommy Campbell with a little bit of mutual yeah. respect with Chris Williams. They are two great football players. Great coverage. Williams wins that one. But he gets up and said, okay. Gives him a little pat on the back. Says, yeah. Six catch. Seven targets in the game for Williams. And now on a roll again. Jennings downfield. And he threw that away. A late flag. Yeah. And it's going to be roughing the passer on Jameer Thurman. Pass intended for Bayanuzzi. Major foul, roughing the passer. Calgary, number 56. 15 yards, automatic first down. Could he be avoided the contact after the throw? Thurman, the will linebacker who uh, 
Got one more start with Deron Mayo almost ready. Yeah. Runner top defensive player of the Stampeders in 2015 coming off a knee surgery that looks like he'll be ready next week. Here is Arsenal. Taking a hit inside the 30, but the Lions are moving the football thanks to that penalty and Manny Arsenal with a catch. Different mindset for Jennings. He, he's on the run. He's moving. He's getting rid of the football. He just reset the clock, the imaginary clock that you have in your head as a quarterback, knowing that the pocket is only going to be there for so long. He just reset his. At the 27. Underneath it goes. There's Williams. Up against Singleton. And Singleton makes the tackle. His seventh. His seventh as he tracks down a very fast Chris Williams. Chris Williams on the crossing route. There's Singleton right in the middle of your screen there. And as he comes on this crossing route, he's got some ground to make up because Singleton drops straight back. Now he's got to close. And this is the speed of the middle linebacker. Track him down. Don't give him the corner. And there's an injured Stampeder getting attention. And we hope it's not serious. Is that Junior Turner who's been shaken up? We'll step aside for a moment. After a long wait to finally get his way back in the Calgary lineup. Seven for Williams, second and three. BC with the football at the Calgary 20. One for one in the red zone tonight. have their first lead of the night. Boy, he's dangerous in the open field. Jennings gets him to it, gets it to him quickly, and then he just starts to make his move and create that magic. Jameer Thurman cut inside on him. Seven plays, 75 yards. This time they go for the one-point convert. Ty Long's missed it. So it's just a two-point lead. And Long now 11 of 15. Well, Jameer Thurman doesn't, doesn't have to feel bad about that one. I mean, that's... The car, I love y'all. What are you doing, though? That, that is a wide open field with lots of space. And watch Chris Rainey. So he makes the move to get out. Thurman has to take that inside. He has to take away the inside throw. So he's late to get out there. And that's the cutback lane for Chris Rainey. But it was the call on Thurman earlier in the drive that yeah. prolonged it for BC. Yeah, that one's sticking with him. But he doesn't have to feel bad about that. Guys like Chris Rainey make you miss. Missed by Long, so it's just a two-point game, but fourth touchdown pass of the year for Jonathan Jennings. And the first touchdown of the game. He's capable. Roy Finch. First touchdown pass of the game for Jennings. Patrick levels back. Seven play, 75 yard drive. See how Calgary responds. Here's Finch. Behind the wedge, and he finds a crease and then stumbles up to the 35 yard line. He'd like to have that back. So Bo Levi Mitchell started four for nine, four for 12 since. Only once in 58 previous starts has he been under 50% in a game. Now back in 2014 against Edmonton. By the way, they won that game. Even with Bo at 14 for 29. 
That's the key to getting him back over 50 percent. Number 16. Number 16. One catch so far tonight. They targeted Mark and Michelle nine times. McDaniel only four times. They'll try and get Messam going. He gets tripped up at the 40 yard line and has five. Those <laughs> two nose to nose after each play and each tackle. 56 on 33. Beats the block from Shane Bergman. Seventh tackle for Elamimian. Second and five, ball batted in the air, and it falls incomplete with three Lions around the football, and Max Ford picked it up, but it's a two and out, the fifth two and out of the game for Calgary. Well, he makes a tackle on first down. And then on second down, that passing down, Chris, he uses his film work and his expertise, his, his study habits to jump the receiver that Bo Levi Mitchell wanted. He was sitting in the zone, but he saw Marquay McDaniel. That's the guy he wanted to go to, and he jumps it. Solomon Elamimian just made back-to-back -back plays. Favor to kick. Williams and Rainey are deep, but it will be Rainey. 45-yard punt, Rainey's got at least 10 on the return, but there is a flag down. Jerome Messam and Solomon Elamimian going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, part of the game within a game here on Friday Night Football. In the action this football season with CFL Fantasy, build your ultimate squad, challenge your friends, and compete to win weekly prizes. Go to tsn.ca slash CFL Fantasy to sign up. Not sure the guys on the field tonight are cooperating with some of the fantasy players. Well, you know, this guy would have been a pick for a lot of people. And he just spent that whole break working on his shoulder and throwing the ball. He feels something in that throwing shoulder. Jennings and Holmes has had shoulder issues and has an issue here as he gets taken down by Thurman. Big sack that drives him back inside the 30. Fast break from the Calgary defense. Just stop messing around. They said, let's go get them. And they do. Loaded up, Singleton, Thurman, straight blitz, and it's a race to get to them. Lost 13. Second and 23. Here they come again. Jennings sprinting out. Micah Johnson in pursuit. Jennings got to take off, but he angles out well short of the first down before taking a big hit. So how does that impact the Bo Levi Mitchell arm situation and how Dave Dickinson calls plays. Well, well, you, you mentioned to me in the commercial break early in the first quarter that Bo just didn't seem to look right to you. And I thought, you know, well, he's had a couple of drops and, and maybe it's just they're just not quite in sync. But clearly there's a problem with his shoulder. He suggested in a halftime interview earlier in the season that he wasn't 100 percent. Flags come down as Finch gets away. And Finch out at the Calgary bench beyond the 50-yard line. But will it stand? 37-yard return of a 58-yard punt. But he kind of let it out of the bag by commending his offensive line, who knew that he was going through something. Which Illegal block. Calgary, number 52. 10-yard penalty. First down. So the illegal block call on Riley Jones. One of the great things that, that Bo Levi Mitchell can do when he's when he's completely healthy is is throw in different positions. I mean, he he's one of the best in the business at side stepping the, the rush and, and throwing off balance, throwing with his back foot, you know, just a lot of different throwing angles and around the rush and things like that. And when your shoulder like that gets sore, you got to believe that it's got to go back to the fundamentals where if you don't have a chance to really step into it, the shoulder doesn't allow you the arm strength to get it to some of the throws that he's had in the past. 
penalty, a 37-yard difference. Calgary's got to start at their 15. We'll think to mess him on a roll in. There's a catch for McDaniel to the 22, and he has seven. And here comes the McDaniel connection. Markway McDaniel. And Mark and Michelle is headed to the room, the man who had been targeted the most by Foley by Mitchell tonight. So a key weapon in the Calgary Arsenal no longer available. Tavares Daniels, Anthony Parker are the wideouts, second and three. Mess him straight ahead, first down, and a lot more as he chugs out close to the 40. Seventeen for Messam. Mark Washington, the defense coordinator, called a stun to Solomon Elamimian right here in the middle of your screen, and he goes the opposite way that Jerome Messam goes. He goes around it to go on that stun in his gap, and Messam was already passing. Messam at 56. Here's Mitchell spinning in the pocket, throwing deep. And Catch made by Anthony Parker, a battle for the football down there at the 20, but Parker's got the catch. And it's the biggest offensive play for the Stampeders on the night. Well, hold on now. That whole break, Bo Levi Mitchell was looking like that shoulder was bothering him. I mean, I, I can't get the angle on exactly how far that throw was, but to the wide field and down the sideline over 50 yards for sure and it had some zip on it so it's not bothering him enough that he can't make that throw biggest catch for Parker on the season a 50 yard connection and a first down just outside the 20 mess him back in Mitchell running around and dumping it off and a short game for Rob Cote Mentioned the bully by Mitchell has not run once this year. Back in 72, Ronnie Lancaster, a whole season, just six rushing plays. And in 2011, Anthony Calvillo, five in a, an injury shortened season. But Bo has not run once in the first half of this season. Yeah, and, he, and he's, he's moving in the pocket and, and rolling in this drive and a little bit at the end of this quarter. But still hasn't crossed the line and ran. Calgary 8 for its last 10 in the red zone. 0 for 1 tonight. Short drop, quick hitter. McDaniel's got the catch to the goal line. Is he in? No signal. Looks like it's going to be first and goal at the 1. His shoulder's fine. It might have been a cramp or something because <laughs> that timing and that zip, he knifed it through there and got his veteran. McDaniel that close to scoring on the final play of the third quarter. So it'll go down to the wire here. Messam and Ellen Mimian locking horns. Chris Rainey giving BC the lead. But the Stampeders threatening to get it back. Well, the Stamps offense coming to life late in that third quarter. Yeah, both offenses got a couple of drives in that third quarter, but, you know, every game is a different journey. This chess match, very different than the one we did last night when there were 59 combined first downs between Winnipeg and Edmonton, and tonight, nowhere near there. So it's a different different journey, different chess match, but we'll see. I think almost 1,000 yards in offense last night. Uh, do we give the defense most of the credit, or... Do we focus in on the offenses uh, not being as sharp as they should be? Yeah, I think both offenses have just now started to get a little traction, get a little bit of chemistry back. Both offenses are now starting to move the ball a little bit, and they struggled at that. Mitchell stays in. The short yardage group is not there. It's Jerome Messam straight ahead, and he pulls his way in for a touchdown. Hey. 
seventh touchdown of the season for Messam to match Jeremiah Johnson. I'm not sure you can stop this for at least a yard. I mean, first contact was made a yard and a half behind the goal line, and Messam is going to take you that yard or two. If he's downhill, if it's a run play going side to side, you can catch him in the backfield for a loss. But if he's heading downhill like that, he's getting one or two. So they'll go for two. Try and make it a six-point lead. Rolling out to the right side and throws incomplete. And it stays 18-14. But a six-play drive, 95 yards for Mitchell. The big play, that 50-yard connection to Anthony Parker. And Jerome Messam punches it in on a night where he has gone over 5,000 yards in rushing. Was it, was it Jim Brown who used to get up limping all the time? I think the great George Reed used to do it as well. And then, and then just get the ball and take off. Bo Levi Mitchell. Working the shoulder before this drive began, and then he went out and he slings a 50-yarder, puts a dart right on to Marquay McDaniel. They finished the drive off with Jerome Messam, but the arm looked just fine. Somehow finds a way, looking for his 49th career win. down and work the tablet with Ryan Dinwiddie former quarterback that can give him another set of eyes a guy who's been in the pocket understands what Bo Levi is going through kickoff sails to Rainey over the 30 but not much more after that Brought down by UBC product Riley Jones. Numbers starting to improve for Jennings, and in that third quarter, he got on the run. He 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 just like I said that the that time clock in his head is just went from three steamboats to one and a half, and after that one and a half, he's taking it off and trying to find something, create something with his legs. Two punts and a touchdown on the three lion drives in the third quarter. Arsenal in motion. Fakes to Johnson. Pressure on. Gets away from Bonners and he'll take off. Here's Jonathan Jennings and he takes a hit as he tumbles across the 40 to the 42 and will be close to a first down. You see what I mean? Uh, this is this is Jennings. I mean, throughout his young career, when he would get out in the open like this, he's looking to throw all the time. Now, once he realizes that he makes one move here, he's going to be in trouble. He's tucking it. Came into the game with 100 yards rushing. Wonder after the shoulder whether he was hesitant to run too much. Stands in here and delivers at midfield to Manny Arsenal in front of Brandon Smith. He'll be coming back, I think, Chris. There's a late flag and looked like a holding call. Holding. Somebody was holding James Bonner. PC, number 68. Ten-yard penalty. Remains first down. And it's the right tackle, Kelvin Palmer. Wally Buono said it at halftime in the interview. We'll stop hurting ourselves with penalties and, and just crushes the execution. Boy, not many drives end up in touchdowns that have a holding call or a sack involved in them. Well, now they're in a first and 20 hole back at the 32. Stands in, throws complete by Anutz. He's got the catch. Wrestled down by Jamar Wall. Back at the original line of scrimmage. will be around second and ten. That's the strategy. You try and get the penalty yardage back on first down and then get in a second and ten, second and nine. Yeah, a little bit better than 
I thought as they spotted around the 44. So it's called second and eight. Just five of 13 on second down conversions, usually around 50% is BC. Here comes pressure. Yeah. Jennings going to take a shot. Watch Chris Williams and look at the tight coverage by Tommy Campbell. Remember when Campbell gave him the attaboy for that quick slant. That time Campbell again in great position. Right up at the top two very good football players battling out there and, and you can see that Chris Williams has a bit of a step. But a good recovery and then he plays the ball well by Tommy Campbell. I think that surprised Williams usually when he gets that first step he's gone but Campbell stayed with him. Jennings was a little hot there I think with Chris Williams telling him just keep running. He'll... Off the edge they almost got the block but instead they get Ty Long who's shaken up. Yeah. And the flag comes down the Lions are going to get the football back. New set of downs for BC. Well they had a punt block earlier in the game but this time a penalty against Calgary. I think it's Reggie Begleton who came Major off foul. the edge. Roughing the kicker. Calgary, number 84. 15 yards, automatic first down. Contacting the kicker if the leg comes down. Roughing the kicker if it's in the air. Thirteenth penalty, 120 yards, and again, just 11 penalties combined in the previous three games. So an uncharacteristic thing for Calgary and see how costly that penalty is. First down Lions across midfield. Maurice Morgan, the newcomer, still has not been targeted tonight. Quarterback draw for Jennings takes off and he's got a first down. And you wonder after taking the hit a little earlier in this series whether a little bit of a confidence builder that the shoulder's okay. Yeah, shoulder's okay, and then they're calling now quarterback draws to get him just straight running the football, breaking it down with his legs, aggressively running up the middle. And he's the Lions' leading rusher on the night. Fifth carry, 38 yards. off inside Rainey and dragged down Shakira Davis read the play you get the sense though that that Jonathan Jennings is trying to sort of put the team on his shoulders and say look I, I'm gonna stop doing what we've been doing for a, a, a game and a half here and stand in the pocket take pressure and throw off balance and throw interceptions he's gonna start running around trying to make it happen create will it be enough Second and seven, the eighth play of the drive. Johnson directing traffic for Morgan, who stays in the block. And the throw is complete for a first down. A clutch catch by Manny Arsenault. That was with the newcomer, Maurice Morgan, and it's good, good eye, Chris, to see. Jeremiah Johnson actually set up protection here. He, he turns just to the top of your screen. Watch it, number 24. He said, you got to get in here and block him. That's Maurice Morgan. And that's not only knowing your job from Jeremiah Johnson, that's knowing everybody's job because that black backside block allowed Jennings to throw the completion. Arsenal up to 60 yards in the game. Jennings a fake, a pump looking for Chris Williams, but... It falls incomplete, and Siante Evans was there defensively. Well, Tommy Campbell covered that deep ball well on the short side of the field, so Jennings lines up Chris Williams to the wide side and goes against Evans. Cody Husband, the Lions center on the limp, trying to stay in the game. But in some discomfort. Watching two quarterbacks try to climb out of issues they had in the first half. Digging their way out. They're grinding. Throw the screen to Rainey. And he makes singles and miss. 
Chris Rainey dropped around the 20. He'll be short of the first down. Singleton missed the tackle, but slowed him up. You won't say that very often with number 49. Singleton missed the tackle. Seven tackles and an interception already tonight. And you're right, he did slow him down so his teammates could get there. Rainey's made a few guys miss. Oh, yeah. So with just under nine to go, Ty Long sizing up this 28-yard field goal attempt, trying to get the Lions within one. The Miss Potbert looming large, but he hits this, and it's 18-17 midway through the fourth quarter at BC Place. Special ceremony at halftime, honoring two of the all-time great BC Lions. How about Brent Johnson, the leader in sacks over 11 years with the Lions, three-time All-CFL top defensive player in 2006. And Carl Kidd, what a personality, one of the ringleaders of two cups, came here in 2000. They won in 2000. He retired after 2006 with his second great cup title as they honor two Lion great defensive players on the wall of fame here at BC Place. Yeah, Brent Johnson was one of those guys that opened the door for Canadians to play positions in the modern era that were always American positions. For Johnson, it was rush in. Became a dominant rush in. And you've seen him at the running back position when Sean Millington in the modern era. Not back to Normie Kwong in those days, but Millington, Andrew Harris, Messam, John Cornish, of course. Johnson was a ratio buster and a quarterback buster, too. And here comes Messi. Running for 10 on that carry. Sixty-six on the night. Climbing the ladder of all Canadian running backs. Dave Dickinson trying to call that run play on first down when Solomon El Mimian is in a stunt. He's called it pretty well so far. If Solomon El Mimian is back there run stopping, he's held messing. Mess him again. There Straight he is. This time stopped in his tracks for four and he's shaken up. And El Mimian calling to the Calgary sidelines. Yeah, and I think it was Purifoy who came up. From his halfback spot from the secondary. Yeah, it is Purifoy. He steps up into that hole and just gets down low and right on the knee. So they'll assess Messerman. We will step aside with 718 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Joe Messam just up. Looks like he's getting some weight on that left leg. And replay seemed to indicate it might have been a little higher than the left knee where he gets well, contacted. Ho hopefully it's a Charlie horse and not a knee injury. But you're right, he's putting weight on it and he's a little bit of a limp as he goes to the sideline. Purefoy, it's a it's a legal tackle. And with a guy as big as Mesa and a lot of DBs will will try and go low on him like that. Look at Solomon Elamimium, too. Respect two guys that have been battling all night. Physical football players step up and Elamimium says, hey, good work. You'll be back. Roy Finch checks in and mess some spot. Second down, Mitchell to the sidelines. The Pass intended for Bagelson. He has it, but was out of bounds. And the punt team has to come on. And that last tackle again was, was legal by Luciez Purifoy, who's having a good game. He defensively, that halfback spot, he's been in good position, covered, made some tackles on the run. As an interception. Yes, sir. Maver. High boot. Brady will field it.
after a 50-yard punt. And no room to move there. He's bumped out of bounds. Deep in Lion territory with Messam getting attention on the Calgary sidelines. Big game. Calgary 5-1-1. One one. Lions hit the midway point of the season tonight. Currently 5-3 and, and looking for a win to leapfrog ahead of the Stampeders. Deep start. Jennings a little trouble getting the handle. And trouble finding an open receiver flushed out there by Junior Turner who's back in. And then Thurman takes him into the signage. And a flag on the plate. Major foul, unnecessary roughness. Calgary number 56. 15 yard penalty, first down. So that's the second major penalty against Thurman. He just ran with him once he was three or four steps out of bounds. Just notice that Hunter Stewart is in the game. Penalties for Calgary, a crosser for Arsenault. He's tracked there by Singleton, who won't let him get loose. Another tackle for Singleton, his eighth of the game. Manny Arsenal still getting used to that knee brace that he was wearing. See it underneath that right, right knee and underneath that sock and the end of his football pants. That's good news to see Jerome mess him up and, and walk around trying to shake it off. Arsenault a season high seventh catch to 62 yards. He's been limited in the damage of that pass high out of the reach of the newcomer. There's Maurice Morgan. Jagarrett Davis got there and I think it was Jennings trying to throw it up over his head. First time Jennings have, has targeted Morgan tonight and again. No Burnham, no Nick Moore for BC. That's, I'm not sure, look. Trying to get it. Tie long, line drive. And here's Finch, 46 yard punt boy. Finch, trying to get into the open field and does. And then gets brought down at the 47. Every time he gets the ball, but Rolly Lambala saved a bigger return. Get noticed like a pro in the 2017 GMC Sierra Elevation Edition. Well, a 24-yard wow. return, but Roy Finch has had a couple of touchdowns this year. And if Rolly Lambala just, he was hanging on because there was about 50 yards of open field side to side and Labala had to try and pull him down and got it done or well, that was a score. Finch stays in without messing. Play action fake Mitchell over the middle and there is a catch and a horse collar tackle maybe. Well they let up on it and Begelton well, the flag comes down anyway. Begelton with his first catch. Yep, Bagleton on this. Major foul, unnecessary roughness, horse collar tackle. Yep, BC, number zero. 15 yards from the end of the play, automatic first down. Yeah, that's textbook Calvary. as well. 28 yard catch, 15 on the penalty. Bagleton played in a preseason game against BC, had five catches, 88 yards, a touchdown, and then got hurt. And Stampeders let him go, but brought him back when he got healthy. So the third trip to the red zone for Calgary. One for two on the night. Looking to extend the lead. Mitchell stands in, throws, and incomplete. Daniels can't hang on. Anthony Thompson from the safety spot. He comes across, he's free to flow to the football, just reading the quarterback and playing off the release of Bull Levi Mitchell, and he slides across and separates the football from DeVars Daniels. Holding Calgary, number 50. 10 yard penalty, remains first down. Brad Erdos called.
first and 20. Six receivers for Mitchell. Pressure coming. Steps up. He will take off. There's the first run of the year, one he really was reluctant to take off on. Yeah, he, he wanted to the very last second try and find an open receiver, but the only guy that was open was Roy Finch. He was actually on this out. Left free, he was trying to get the attention of his quarterback. The second and 14. the rush dumps it off underneath fits the catch but he's contained buddy jackson the former stampeder with the tackle and the field goal unit will come on jackson with the stampeders when they won the cup in 2014 so we've hit the three minute warning going down to the wire here tonight at bc place Toronto and throwing to S.J. Green, who you saw in that shot. So third down, Messam watching on the sidelines. Freddy Paredes surveying a 26-yard attempt that'll put Calgary up by four if successful. And Paredes successful, 21-17. Dave Dickinson's crew has the lead with just over two and a half to go. And BC now likely needing a touchdown. Yeah, and, and that, that missed extra point, as you mentioned. Large now. You need a major to win it. But if you're Jonathan Jennings, you say, give me the ball, enough time to execute a a drive all the way down the field, which is at 237, plenty of time. I want the ball and a chance to win on the last drive. That's what every quarterback wants, and Jennings has his opportunity. The game's still very much in the balance. Would you say the Lions turned the page off last week? It took some time, didn't it? I, I think they're grinding. I think they're grinding their way out of the hole that was that Saskatchewan game. I wouldn't say they're there yet. They're still looking up at the edge of the hole. But they're but they're digging their way out. And the first thing you got to do when you're digging yourself a hole, stop digging. Chris Reedy with the return. Nice little cut there to spring across the 40-yard line. Rob Cote in on the tackle. And now Kahari Jones with last second instructions for Jonathan Jennings on one of the biggest possessions of the season so far for the Lions. 67 yards away from where they need to be. Both Siante Evans and Tommy Campbell having themselves good games on those corners. Backfield, quick hitter for Arsenal, brought down by Thurman. And up at the 47, it's four to five for Arsenal. All the plays on the line of scrimmage. The so second and six. Jennings underneath, and there's Morgan, who caught it and then dropped it. And they're going to call incomplete. What a big catch that would have been as his first as a BC Lion. Are they reeling interception? Well, when I saw it live, I thought it was. Let's take another look. They're saying got it there, and then the control. ball comes loose. Well, unless that ball is is 
Only Buono doesn't have a challenge, although it should be under review by the command center. Number one, is that a catch? And number two, is that... Well, I think he used the ground to trap it, Chris. So, so it's a fumble recovery if it... It's either a catch and a fumble recovery, Calgary ball, or incomplete. Third down, BC. Now does Morgan have control of it? Started to turn with it. Started to turn, but was moving it. Let's take a look at it in, in regular speed. And a huge call here because Calgary gets the ball at midfield or BC has the opportunity to to punt from yeah. midfield. Well, Unless based, they were going to gamble on on third down and seven with over two minutes to go. Well, based on the way that kind of play has been ruled this year, that looked like it was going to be ruled that he didn't have control of it. I think we have a verdict. After review, the ruling on the field is overturned. It's an incomplete pass. It'll be third down. Uh, it's a break for the Lions. And the punt team will come on. But it gives the hammer to Bo Levi Mitchell because now he's got the ball and a chance to kill his game, run the clock. Now the question is, is Jerome Messam going to be part of this final series in the last two minutes to grind the clock down, or do they go with Roy Finch in the backfield? Would you have gone for it third and six? There's still time to two -on -one. kick it away, yeah. Time for the defense to get the job done if Ty Long can pin them, but not a deep punt. And Finch oh, got clotheslined across the 25-yard line. Low bridge there. 38-yard punt by Ty Long. And here comes Bo Levi Mitchell. And I don't think Jerome, Jerome Messam is on the stationary bike, so he's not available to grind it down. It's probably stiffening up on him, and it looks like it. Yeah, he's giving you the I can't go. No timeouts for Wally Buono. So the Stampeders looking for a first down or two. A quick jump there, and flags fly. Greg Rowe pointing it. At Procedure. Better Kyle. Calgary, number 65. It's a five yard penalty. Remains first down. And it is Better Kyle who moved first. Sixteen penalties for Calgary. And can't remember the last time we ever had them in that vicinity. So first and 15. And off to Fitch. Surrounded. Swarmed. Brought down for a loss. Max Ford, Elamimian on the scene. And they drop pitch for a loss of two, and it's now second and 17. Well, the loss, too, if, if, if Bo Levi Mitchell can't, can't complete this next pass, and he doesn't want to throw into coverage either and turn it over at this side of the field. Ninth tackle of the game for Elamimian. The losses mean good field position on the puck for BC. Collapsing pass caught by Finch, and he is down at the 31 yard line. Elamibian there again, and the punt team has to come on. The Lions are going to get it with about a minute to go, but got that yardage back. And a good decision by Boley by Mitchell to not force it, try and make up that 17 yards, 
but get enough back, get the field position, get your punt team out there and make it a real long field for Jonathan Jennings. But Chris Rainey may have something to say about that field position before it's over. So Williams back with Rainey. Did have a timeout left. We thought they used one of the first half and lost one on the challenge, but they did stop the clock. So they're going to have plenty of time here. Let's see what Maver unloads. High but not deep. Rainey going to let it bounce, though, and fields it well on the hop and has a crease. Here's Chris Rainey, and Maver fell but able to recover to make the tackle. Oh, that was a desperado tackle by Rob Maver and a big return by Rainey. Yeah, it looked like he had a hole. It looked like that bounce got the Calgary Stampeder cover team a little bit out of their lanes, and it opened up a hole, and Maver just, just hanging on. Well, they start at the Calgary 46-yard line. 29-yard return by Rainey. Three-man rush for the Stamps. Jennings stands in over the middle, and Arsenault is stopped short of the first down as Adelike moved up for a, another tackle from his safety spot. <laughs> Trying to get the call from Car Jones. So second and one. The time running off the clock here. Short drop through the reeds and almost intercepted. Intended for Morgan. Or right, that's just that's that was a little bit of poor <laughs> clock management from the BC Lions. That was at 106 at the start of the reset of the ball for that play call. And now job one is just to get the first down yard. Shaquille Richardson with the break up on the last play. And well, they need to get the first down, and will they get it? They do. And now Wally Buono wants them to get over the ball. And yeah, that wasn't the problem, though. Not getting on the ball wasn't the problem. The problem was that Jennings is not getting the calls quick enough. So he's made the call. Play hasn't been whistled in yet. Now it has been, and the clock starts to roll again. More efficient this time. Stands in, but he gets level. Junior Turner gets home for a big sack. As he is welcomed back to the St. Peter lineup. Monster sack. Junior Turner. Jennings was going to step in and, and launch it deep and then saw a deep defender over the top and changed his mind. Gave Turner a chance to get the huge play. Clock running under a half minute now, and Jennings needs a bunch. He's got Arsenault who steps out short of the first down, but that stops the clock, and Arsenault has his 10th catch of the night. Got to lean on their veterans. They're doing that with Arsenal. Comes down to this play. Going to be third and four. Stop the clock. I don't think Jonathan Jennings is going to test the corners. In Tommy Campbell or Siante Evans. He's going to look inside. Got Rainey in there. Third and four. Need to get it. And the pass is... Let's see where the forward progress is. It's right at the 25. I'm not sure. I think they had to get beyond the 25. We'll get a measurement. The first down stick on the sidelines is just inside the 25-yard line, and the ball is spotted outside the 25. So unless the sideline chains were deceiving, and now they're going to wait to get the... 
replay official to confirm the spot. Review for the spot on the play. Yeah, that's what they're doing right now. They're they're going to look and and forward progress as to where his knee touched as he caught that ball. So again, forward progress when he was contacted. And you just want it to all sure. hinges on this. Yeah, I just want to make sure they get this spot right, obviously, as crucial as it is. And that's what the video official, not the replay official, the video official, that knee touches basically right at the line. Yeah, looks like the official got a very accurate spot. No, it's a, it's a matter of is the middle of the ball across the line or is the tip of the ball just touching the line and that's what I think they're double checking right now because that that knee is right at the line and that's where the ball is caught as well I mean I that looks like it should be marked on the 25 yard line and if it is we're still not sure that's enough it might not be because that that marker is just past it Man, it all will come down to this. I think they got the spot right. Let's let's find out if that's enough for first down yardage. But the Stamps think it's but the Stamps think it's short. And and on on this distant view, that looks like it is as well. After review, we're adjusting the spot of the ball to the back of the 25-yard line. Well, they got a, a chain link or two. That still might not be enough. Dave Dickinson's in an uproar. Well, yeah, yeah, because they they moved it an inch, and there. And I, Dave Dickinson's argument is, how could you possibly change it to move it an inch? And They're short. They didn't Doesn't get it. Matter. Didn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's a turnover on downs. The fourth turnover of the night, and that's going to do it. Time for your inches speech. <laughs> the inches you need are everywhere around you. The Lions needed one more. Big play by Shaquille Richardson. In fact, he made two on that last series as the Lions come up short. Well, it was a grind on both sides. And it came down to that. Now a victory formation for the Stampeders to take the final 15 seconds off the clock. They'll move to 6-1-1, one, one, win their fourth consecutive game. And their seventh in the last eight against the BC Lions. Another knee, and that's ball game. The Calgary Stampeders posting a 21 to 17 victory here on the road at BC Play Stadium. The Nissan Titan player of the game is brought to you by the Nissan Titan official vehicle of the Canadian Football League. Well, you don't have a 100 yard receiver. I guess Manny Arsenal was honorable mention if the Lions win, but they don't. It's a Calgary victory, and the Calgary leader on defense, Alex Singleton, with eight tackles and one interception. Gets our nod as the player of the game. It was going to defense either way, depending on how this one finished. And both late, uh, middle linebackers had a great game. Alex Singleton is our player of the game. Boy, a missed convert by Ty Long looms large. Otherwise, Lions are kicking a game-tying field goal at the last minute. But 11 turnovers for BC in the last two weeks, and it's two consecutive losses as they fall to five and four at the halfway mark of this regular season. Wasn't Bo's best, but he wins again his 49th career victory. 21-17 the final. Thanks for being with us tonight. So long from BC Play Stadium. Sports Center is now.